think patient-centered care is really important for patients. It's why we all went into the profession. It's what kind of care we expect to get ourselves and what we'd like our families to get. And a lot of times as we go through the process of training, as we start to get more technical, we start to think of the patient-centered part of care as being the price we have to pay to be doctors. So we want to diagnose and treat and we want to move on to the next thing. And we think of that relationship as sort of being the cost that we have to bear. And really for the patient, uh, when that's you as the patient, that's really care. Um, that's very much a part of the care. My niece is having surgery today at a very famous hospital system and she decided to go there because she didn't really feel she got good advice from the previous place that she went. And I asked my niece, I said, well, what was it about the second doctor that made you feel more comfortable? So, because the decision to have surgery is a big decision for a lot of people. And uh, what my niece said is, well, uh, the doctor listened to me. The doctor actually promised to give her something that was more of a social nature. They had a common connection and said, oh, I've got a website that I want to give you on that. And then later in the day, the doctor remembered to bring back and give that website. So it was a really a personal connection. But then there was a really a sense of caring, a sense of we can address your issue, we've done this before, and made sure that all of her questions were answered. When you're in the office with a patient there, it's a very complex task. Um, you're trying to read body language, you're trying to listen to them and understand their symptoms, and you're also trying to think, what does this mean? What are the diagnostic possibilities? So your mind is just racing much of the time. Um, you've got charting to do, you've got coding to do, you've got uh, labs to order, uh, you have instructions that you want to put into the after visit summary so the patient knows what to do when they get home since only about 50 percent of them will remember what you told them uh, after they leave the office. So it's a complex endeavor. Some of the reasons I think that patient center care takes more time is sometimes we're working in old models. We're actually uh, thinking that the doctor has to do all the work. And I think some of the ways that I've found that have helped my patients and other doctors have found as well is when we can get the patients involved in the care process, it actually goes a lot better. So having the patient bring in a list of concerns. Now every doctor is afraid when they get the list that it's going to be 10 things and they have 15 minutes. But at least you get the list and you can start to prioritize. You can say, okay, I see these things are really important to you. Uh, we might have time. We have 15 minutes today. so. Uh, tell your patients up front how much time you have. A lot of them don't know how much time they have. Uh, so tell them how much time you have, look at the list, and get them involved in prioritizing and figuring out what you can do today. I think um, one of the ways that we cut corners is that we start to interrupt patients. So there's a number of studies that show that uh, physicians interrupt patients anywhere from 18 to 25 seconds into the interview. And that sounds like you're trying to save time. You interrupt the patient, you're starting to ask about what's uh, important to them and ask about their symptoms uh, when they might have two or three other problems. And then what happens is at the end of the interview when you think you're all done, you've examined the patient, you develop a treatment plan and you have your hand on the doorknob, the patient says, oh by the way doctor, I have another issue that I want to bring up to you. So one of the things that's actually helped me a lot and I wish I'd learned it as a medical student was an article in the Annals of Internal Medicine called What Else? Uh, so you find out what you're here for today. Well, I have a sore elbow. And instead of launching into the elbow, you say, what else? And they say, well, I actually have a problem with uh, some chest pain. Uh, what else? Why well, I have a mole I want to get checked. What else? Well, there's nothing else. Well, then you have the agenda out. That doesn't take very much time, and then you can start to uh, prioritize what, what you're going to deal with. One of the pieces of advice I give is to try to detach yourself. Uh, it's, it's hard to do when you're in the heat of an interview, but if you can actually imagine yourself being a fly on the wall and saying, I wonder what this looks like to somebody who's watching it from the outside. I wonder what it feels like to be a patient. And one of the things that uh, we don't do very much, I was never taught this in school, but is to actually ask the patient, how is this going? Do you feel like you're getting your questions answered? or what? Oh, what don't you understand about what I just said? Or even better, to use a teach back to say, 
you know, I've just spent five minutes explaining some fairly complex things and I want to make sure I communicated in a way that made sense to you. Can you tell me back what you heard me say? So using a teach back might be a good thing, but uh, one of the things that uh, we can do is we can actually halfway through the interview say, you know what, I want to just make sure that you're getting what you need from this. Is this going how you thought it would? Um, and if not, you have a chance to adjust and recover. So that's actually a, a time saver in a way. Uh, because it could be that I get to the end of my 15 minutes and that's not exactly what the patient wanted out of it. The tremendous uh, gr uh, joy that there is in being able to uh, talk to somebody, to have them actually open a window to you into their life that they don't open to other people, you uh, are entrusted with secrets, um, that is really a, an honor. That's a place of honor for the physician to have. So some of that takes time. Some of that you can't rush.